Welcome to part 5 of Migrate AWS Lambda to Azure Functions. In this part, we're going to take a look at the local development experience and how you can develop, debug, run your code locally, and then deploy it into Azure. To develop locally, we'll work with the Azure Functions core tools. These are cross-platform tools that can be run on Windows, Mac, and Linux to develop your Azure Functions locally. Let's start with a simple example. I have the function core tools installed, so I can do function tools help to find out what my options are. I'm going to create a directory called simple func, and then I'm going to do func new specify JavaScript as my language. Here I can pick a template for my new function I'm going to choose the HTTP trigger. I'll take the default name, and now my function's been written out for me. Let's take a look at the function that was created. If I change into this directory and type index.js, you can see the code is very similar to what we created inside of the portal. I'm going to back out to my root directory I'm going to use func start to start the function's host. This starts the function's runtime. This is the same runtime that's hosted in Azure, but here I can develop locally. You can see I've got this local endpoint. I'm going to copy that, and then over in another shell, I'm going to curl that endpoint. We get please pass a name on the query string, so I'm going to pass a name. And you can see our function is working fine. Let's try a different approach. I'm going to use the cross-platform free Visual Studio Code tool to create and debug my function. First, I make a directory. Then I launch code. I'm using the Insiders version, but this will work just fine with the full release version. And what I'm going to use in Visual Studio Code is an extension specifically for Azure Functions. This is the extension that lets me work with functions from within Visual Studio Code. So let's go to our command palette and create a new project. We select the folder, which is the folder I'm in. Pick the language, I'll choose JavaScript. Pick the HTTP trigger, and we'll keep the default name. We'll make it anonymous. You can see the entire functions project is scaffolded for me. This is the same code that we generated from the functions tool. Let me set a breakpoint and go ahead and hit F5 to debug. As you can see, it's launching some node tasks in case I have packages. And now it's spinning up the functions host. And we'll get the same behavior with an endpoint that we can access. We'll copy this endpoint. From a command line, I'm going to curl with test. We can see we stopped on our breakpoint. We have full access to the variables. I can even expand into that query string object. And let's set the name to something different. Let's call this local debug continue with the function and we can see that we successfully debugged and even intercepted variables. What about a more involved example? Let's go ahead and highlight this trigger but paste in the code from our full primes example. This is the one that uses table storage. I've pasted the entire example in. From the command line what I want to do is do an npm install of Azure Storage because that's a dependency that this code has. Now that's installed, I'm going to go to my local settings. I'm going to take advantage of an emulator for storage so that I don't have to connect to the cloud at all. I'm just going to say use development storage equals true and this storage emulator is going to be utilized for me. Because I have a table that this function uses, we're going to go into Storage Explorer, 
and I'm in my local emulator so for tables I'm just gonna simply create a table called primes and that's the table for the cache let's go ahead and run this function once again I have the endpoint let's curl that endpoint Two is a prime, three is a prime, four is not a prime. Let's go back to three. This time it says it's cached. If I go into my storage and I refresh, you can see these values have been loaded to my local storage. As a last step, I wanna deploy this to Azure. So I'm gonna go back to my command palette, pick deploy to function app. We'll use my subscription. We're going to create a new function app. We'll give it the name AWS Migration Deploy. I'll pick the West US as my deployment location. And now notice that it's creating the assets for my storage account. Now the deployment is completed, you can see directly from Visual Studio Code we can stream logs from the host site. We can upload settings and we can view the output. Let's go into the portal and see what we've created. I'm looking at the resource group and everything's been created for us. Let's go into the function, drill into the function we deployed, and test it out. Test with the non prime. We're deployed. To learn more about running functions locally on your machine, visit aka.ms forward slash fn tools.